Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using during the week, or will use during the week. So, let's dive into it. If you like videos where we talk about fountain pens both new and old and all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, maybe you disagree with an ink and pen pairing. Or perhaps you'd like to talk about those unseen pens. Or perhaps there's a pen here that uh, needs a little more elaboration. Please let me know down in the comments. So, let's dive into it. Alright, so, my pens would be this week's first impression. Still has ink, miraculously. A Lamy 80 with a double broad nib. Uh, you may be able to guess that that wasn't inked all that long ago, which is why it still has ink, if you saw that episode. Lamy 2000, which a lot of people were asking about these two pens, so I threw them together here. Uh, Caveco V14S, which is almost empty. So I felt it deserved a chance to shine before it goes to sleep again for a little while. A, oops, got so excited there I kicked the whole tray. Uh, <laughs> Pelican 400NN, Senator Windsor, guess that goes along with Senator C Cracked Blind Cap and Senator Long Blind Cap, and a few more Senators that are drifting around the place, <laughs> uh, a Soyuz AP, and I don't usually like metal pens, so Kind of wild that that's there. A Lamy Safari. And the infamous Stipula Etruria. Have not had repairs on it yet, but uh, I just got the urge to ink it up. And yeah, I've the saga has yet to be sung. So those are the pens and inks that I'm using this week. As always, I will be writing everything in my BOMO art journal and uh, had some thoughts with pe from various people about the future of BOMO on this channel. So uh, I, a lot of people are going to where my heart is, which is BOMO needs to continue. So I will be looking at, I, I have time, you know, um, but I will be looking at getting uh, probably two more BOMO art journals to replace the two. And uh, so I can just continue seamlessly. Although I am hoping I can find a version with uh, blank paper for reasons I'll get into one of these days when I talk about paper again. So for now, let's see how the pens this week write. So it's April 5th, 2019. Or will be by the time this is released. I'm actually filming this on the 3rd. Because that's how I roll. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, on, on a happier note, April 12th, which will be one week away from this, I will be in Fargo, State Science Olympiad. Don't expect lots of immediate responses to comments that night. I'll probably mention it because I'm filming that episode of Pens and Use this weekend early because I know I won't be thinking about this channel at all during the week. So uh, I'm going to film it early. And uh, maybe if I get time while I'm there that evening, I may film something like a pens on the road, something extra, but we'll see. So seven days till state. Uh, this is my Lamy 80, which a few people who watched the original first impression likened unto a Lamy 2000. I have not found yet. I'm, I haven't really been looking that hard either, but I will after uh, all the excitement of state is over. But I have wondered if this is Macrolon, and a few people have commented. But I do have vintage pens that feel like this that are not macro. Oops, excuse me. Hiccup there. So I don't know. I have also been reassured that this is a price tag. Uh, the 64 is probably the price. And uh, I'm trying to remember, I want to say we worked it out to about 126 bucks in today's dollars. Uh, I had some comments about various suggestions for the price of the pen based on inflation and the, the value of the money in 1975 when this pen was sold. 
Uh, I'm guessing this pen is just happy it has an owner now because uh, if it still has the price tag on it, I think it probably just sat on the shelf and never got sold. So this is a Lamy 80. It's a double broad. Just a remarkable gold nib, but it must be plated with something. And when I went back to the original listing, yes, it was listed as 14 karat gold. I don't know how I didn't notice that. And perhaps I just didn't remember. But that is, this is, this pen is a delight. Uh, the ink in it is, actually also turns out to be really nice. It's uh, Iroshizuku Shinkai. And you can tell this goes through a lot of ink very quickly. Uh, so I, I would be really surprised if this is in my pens in use next week. But uh, beautiful ink. Rather attractive pen. Perhaps a bit more clunky looking than the Lamy 2000. But all in all, just a very nice pen. And of course, I was actually asked this in a comment this week. I, I didn't I uploaded my review of the Pelican Silvexa. I filmed several reviews a few weeks ago. That was one of them. Uh, that pen is empty now, so that wasn't going to school this week. But uh, this pen just gets refilled every time it gets empty. And I had quite the saga with it this year. So uh, I'm happy to have one. Oh, little link, but I'm going to blame condensation because it's very watery looking around the nib there. All right, so Lamy 2000. Fine nib. And the ink in it is Pelican. 4001, brilliant black. And I distinctly recall complaining in a Pens and Use episode... Uh, several weeks ago that this seems broad to me. So I don't know if it's adjusting to me, if it's the ink or what it is, but that seems like the type of writing I'm used to. Could be t entirely psychological. I don't know. Um, of course, this pen stepped in during that horrible time when I didn't have my Pelican, or I'm sorry, when I didn't have my Lamy 2000. This is a wonderful, wonderful Caveco V14S, a fine point nib. This could easily be my daily writer if I didn't like that Lamy 2000 so darn much, because this is a great pen. And it just has that character of the late 60s. A little bit finer writer than the Lamy 2000, which may partly be where I got the idea that that was writing broad, because like I said, this definitely pinch hit for me. This has my uh, Lamy Black in it. I am probably switching to Pelican Brilliant Black for the near future, not that it's necessarily a better or worse ink. I mostly because I've got such a really huge bottle of it, thanks to another project. Of course, everybody loves their Pelicans. This is one from the 1950s, a Pelican 4001. No, I am so sorry. <laughs> I, I got the zeros right. Pelican 400NN. With a Turn this in the right direction here with a quite nice gold nib. I just recently saw some collars for sale at my Uber pens for this com or for this pen. Uh, I don't know if uh, I, I know some of them had polystyrene in them. I'm going to guess that they fixed it because that's where I actually purchased this pen. Now you just saw in the nib, it didn't give a nib size. I would guess that's a fine or an extra fine. 
Uh, perhaps the nib size is written, it's just not visible. Uh, the ink in it is Platinum Classic Lavender Black. Uh, just a series of inks that I enjoy very, very much. A pen I enjoy very, very much. And it takes me to the Senator Windsor. Another one of those slim black pens that I like. I don't even think... It's a gold nib. I'm pretty sure this is a steel nib that's gold plated. Come on. Medium. And it has a generous ink window. Uh, I, I've been using this pen off and on, I'll be honest. Perhaps not. Okay, that scared me. <laughs> the wind is hitting a flappy thing. The dryer vent i don't own a dryer anymore dryer vent came loose in the winter uh, i need to go outside and tape that shut again so if you hear pounding it's not somebody pounding on my door but man is it loud when i'm down here in the basement so send it oops you didn't see any of that too excited about the pounding senator windsor this is a medium and the ink in it uh, it's a brand I'm getting much more interested in, Rohrer and Klingner. They actually have some very nice colors, and they're inexpensive. Königsblau. I want to say that means King's Blue, but I forgot to look it up, but i almost positive I'm right. It's just kind of a nice, kind of a rich royal blue, which would make sense, I guess, if it's Koenigs. Uh, this is a Soviet pen, a Soyuz AP, and I want to thank, I forgot to mark who it was, but one of the commenters had me add that AP to its name, and I... And I have information now that says, yes, they are right. Uh, I don't normally care for metal pens, but this one has a nice plastic grip. Lamy Studio, take a lesson here. And uh, make, turns it into a very nice pen. Um, an almost empty pen. I did want to do a review before it got empty. So I may have to do that this weekend, even though I don't have nearly the information I would like. I don't know if I ever will. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know a nib size, but that sure looks like a fine to me. And the ink in it is Robert Oster Avocado. I don't know if that necessarily makes me think of avocados, but... That is a very nice color. My Lamy Safari is holding another one of those Roar and Klingner inks that I like. A little bit brighter color. Kind of to match a brightly colored pen. And yes, I do own a bottle of the ink that came with it, but uh, I don't use it very often. So, Lamy Safari. Oh, yeah, I remember why I like this ink. <laughs> that is a nice, rich purple with some shading. So, this is the Lamy Safari. The ink is Roar and Cleaner Safarino. That's pretty. Uh, on, on the camera, it looks very blue, so I'm hoping that's just the preview screen because you need to see that nice, rich purple color. And the saga of the Stipula Etruria continues. 
Uh, I know I want it working perfectly, and I know I need to send it to a Nibmeister. Um, I have not yet done so, but I need to. In the meantime, I found a couple workarounds around the fact that it will suffer sudden ink starvation. Because it's just so damn pretty, I just can't let it sit in my case, even though it's not giving me very happy feelings. I see that Google, I, I didn't buy this from Goulet Pens, but of course I looked. It's still for sale on the Goulet Pens website. Um, I'm guessing they must be having trouble selling it, I don't know. But anyway, see, that's the kind of writing I want. And if I write with this on Tome Away River paper, it's gorgeous, especially with this ink. Uh, not a flex nib, as you can tell there. So a Stipula Etruria Prisma 88. Magma Edition with T Flex. See, that's gorgeous. I want that all the time. And the ink in it. See, we're starting to starve. Oh, I take that back. Uh, I first heard of this ink with the pen habit and uh, bought myself a bottle. Well, a sample first, not a bottle, because I like it. It's just such a nice ink, very nice shading. It's perhaps not uh, the Noodler's Apache Sunset, but who cares? It's just such a nice color. And, of course, growing up in Pennsylvania, fall leaves were definitely a thing for me. I know all about them. Maybe it's not... Vermont or something, but plenty of memories uh, living in the, well, Appalachians for a while and then in the Allegheny Mountains of uh, fall colors. Now I live in North Dakota where uh, fall colors seem to be brown and yellow, but it's, it's a different kind of beauty. You don't get the dramatic leaves, uh, but you get other beautiful signs of fall. I, I just have always enjoyed fall, and living out here, that's no exception. I just love fall. Uh, summer, I'm just kind of meh. Spring, usually so busy with school ending that, and then the rush to get the garden in, I just don't enjoy it. Fall is just like that time to relax and enjoy the, the fruit of your labors. Uh, except school's starting bad, so there's that. But uh, I guess that's what I signed up to do, and I keep going back, so I must like it. Uh, so anyway, those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week, um, continuing to use. I will confide that that stipula hasn't gone out of the house. I will not take that pen to school. Uh, not that I'm too worried because they basically live in my bag. I only pull the pen case out if I'm going to use a pen. But um, I don't know. I just can't quite bring myself to take it to school. But anyway, I... Uh, Another thing that's been coming up since I started doing these first impressions. Now, this week, I was just so excited to get that Lamy 80 up. I filmed that this past weekend. But uh, in general, I've been filming first impressions ahead of time. And they're easy because I don't have to do a lot of research. I just have to experience a pen and find out, you know, clean it out if it's vintage. But experience a pen, see how well I like it. And talk about my feelings. And then say, hey, I didn't do any research yet, so take it with a grain of salt. And then I can get away with whatever I say. Well, um, I can end up some weeks with quite a number of pens inked up. And uh, I can't show them here because you haven't seen my first impressions yet. So uh, know that they're writing in the background. If you're a pen pal, you may have seen some of those pens appear in your letter. And you're thinking, I've never seen that on his channel, which... I don't know if you have that eye for detail. <laughs> That's interesting. But, uh, yeah, I actually have more pens of this inked up. I have way too many. And uh, something for me to think about how to shrink that down. Um, I, I'll be honest, those two pen B BBS pens are so full of ink and it's taken forever to work through them. So I'm starting to think, well, okay, the past couple weeks I've been doing this. Can it just sit? For a week or two without me touching it and not get all dried up and 
the answer has been yes. So I'm finding that with a lot of the pens that they can sit and I can rotate a bit. But I do want to keep the number inked down just because I can't remember what's in them. And the pens or inks I really uh, don't end up getting used. Uh, let's see. In I'm actually looking to see how much battery is left on that, clock, on that camera. Uh, in other exciting news, I think I told you, State Science Olympiad next weekend. Uh, I have been uh, asked about video footage. Now, I honestly weirded out by the idea of putting students out there. But the campus, I think, is fair game. And I have actually a surprising amount of footage from the campus that I should put up. Uh, I, I have always thought about a video on college, you know, what, what's the benefits of college? You know, recognizing, of course, that there are some definite drawbacks to college, dollars being one of them, especially nowadays. I'm lucky and worked hard. I don't have college debt, but uh, I know that's a big thing. So you know, I'm still thinking about that. I, I'm thinking I do want to do a benefits of college video. So uh, that might fit into it somehow or perhaps just a hey here's North Dakota's biggest university video who knows um, some of the other things that are coming up for me um, I, I've been working more on my organization I now carry a field note field notebook everywhere with me in my pocket uh, that's in a lot of ways replaced what I was doing with the bullet journal I, I just can write everything down in it uh, wherever it's a lot more portable and then I can file it. You know, I've got Evernote on the computer. Uh, I can put everything in the right category. You know, a student says something that's kind of off that you want to document. Sure, write it down in the notebook. Then you can put it on your computer on Evernote and it's there. Uh, and perhaps it's a student that you're going to be keeping a running tally of these interesting things for possible future documentation. There it is. Great ideas for the classroom. There it is. Uh, channel thought or hey fun episode or I I've even I today during teaching I had two great ideas for episodes for IGTV which I'm I need to film another episode of that I, I've let that one s slide too much when I've been busy I needed to get ahead there like I've been with like I finally got with the reviews and some other stuff uh, need to get that back to uh, back going again with some backlog so I can do that during these busy times. Um, so I'm really liking the field notes. The uh, Evernote is just, I've used it for years. All my fountain pen research gets collected there. I had a comment today asking about a Caveco V2S. Well, I don't have any data on it, but a quick search through my Evernote revealed the website that does have the data on it. So I was glad to be able to help that person out a little bit, even though I just had a few minutes there to spare, and so I just gave him the link without a lot of information. But I was able to do that thanks to Evernote. So I, I want to talk about that be sometime this summer after all this is over. Just checking the battery time, 3 minutes and 19 seconds. Um, because if you're into pens, you're probably into writing, you're into information, you're into thoughts, you're into expressing your thoughts. Uh, and uh, it hurts me to say this, but the best tools aren't always paper and pen. Sometimes they are. Uh, there are electronic tools. We shouldn't be averse to them. And I would like to get into that organization and collecting information and how the notebooks and the electronic parts of my world interact. So you may hear hints of that in the next few weeks on uh, pens in use. Know that my brain is actually cooking up a series of videos as I do this so look forward to that or don't if that's not your bag uh, hopefully looking forward to a little more driving videos after this whole mess gets over with uh, science Olympiad yeah just the time keeps on slipping slipping into the future <laughs> but we'll get it back because uh, that's why I'm embarking on this productivity organization thing because I don't want to be here next year if I'm still well, okay, that's a whole other story that I have to tell when I have more than two minutes and ten seconds left. But uh, my job may be changing next year thanks to uh, we can't find a science teacher. So if you uh, are a science teacher would like to 
come to North Dakota and live in a rural part of North Dakota, call me. <laughs> we really need to get you hooked up because I need a colleague. I cannot do the science department. I know it's a small school, but it's big enough. I can't do it by myself. So I really could use your help. <laughs> uh, or if you're an art teacher, but that one doesn't benefit me as directly. So that's what's going on in my life right now. So if videos like this interest you, uh, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, if you're a science teacher, call me. And you, especially if you want to teach in southwestern North Dakota. Uh, if, if you uh, would like to comment on any of the pens or any of the things I've said about the interaction of electronic and pa pen and paper organization, please feel free to comment down below about that too. I'm composing up here, writing ideas down to get them out of my brain. And hopefully at some point, either toward the end of school or the summer, I can create something from it. So, well, thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. 51 seconds to go.